a good, what you're bringing yeah, up though is helpful. we can go right at the core of the guilt because it's like a tether that's like, you're saying, okay, I really, my balloon's ready to take off, but there's a couple tethers here that, <laughs> the cords are getting drawn pretty tight because they still seem to be holding me down. And what it is, is the sense that in the ego belief system, there's a false sense of the responsibilities in the sense that the mind makes up a, a world of illusions and then gets wound into those duties, obligations, responsibilities. And then eternal peace seems like too big of a price, <laughs> you know, it's too big of a price to let go of those things. So in other words, what you're really calling for is you're saying, okay, I'm convinced that I have some guilt around some responsibilities and duties. And I need to be shown the impossibility of that. I need to be shown that, that there's no sacrifice involved in this. That me following my highest good for everyone, everything, doesn't, require, doesn't involve loss. Because as long as I believe that there's some loss involved in doing God's will, then it won't matter what I'm doing. There's going to be some guilt and some shame that's involved in that. So those are great quotes from the Bible about, you know, who is my father, mother, sister, brother, he that does the will of my father in heaven is my father, my sister, brother. Um, the ego is involving past associations, and I, I use this metaphor a lot, I call it like the 52 card pickup, where I, you know, I see that, that the ego dealt out all of the experiences, my, the relationships, mother, father, the very ones we're talking about, you know, you go all the way around and all the contacts and people you've had in your life, and there was guilt in all of them because of who the dealer was. That, the, that the, the ego wanted us to displace the guilt of thinking you separated from God and put a little bit, hide a little bit of guilt in each relationship. And then when you start to let them go, this, the guilt starts coming up like, wait a minute, I don't want to harm somebody, I don't want to, I don't want to follow my joy and then bring harm and misery to them still implying that following joy and following God's will could bring harm to anyone, you know? Especially when they're telling you that you are. Yeah, especially. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Like that. Wait, wait, wait. There goes Lisa's. And that's the truth. For, I have two teenagers. I have 17 and 16. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you something. What I did, and I told you this, I think, at that other gathering was, mm -hmm. you know, I just felt this pulling. And I really just felt I had no other choice. And I was really in such a state of joy. And my family saw it too. My family saw this change in me. That I was just really so full of peace and joy. And, um, and I had guilt. And I'm not, there's still a little guilt there. Okay? But it, it seems to all take care of itself. Like the one time when I was leaving, and I was leaving for 11 days and telling them I'm coming back and I'm leaving for 11 days, you know, there were four days there that I was in this total bliss. Well, I told you, I closed my eyes and it was like light and nothing was letting me have any doubt and I was staying in the joy and I was singing and they were all like, I can't believe you're doing this, da 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 They were thinking I was joining a cult, you know. I told my son he could quit school and come with me. Then they really thought I lost it. <laughs> you know, really, they took me out to dinner and they had like a, they did like a psychoanalysis. Yeah, yeah. they were to the intervention. You know, they, they, they looked at me and said, now you really believe that Paulie should quit school? Yes, I do. I do think that if he should come with me, I said, it's meaningless. And they said, how can you say that uh, having, not having an education is, you know, meaningless? Hey, I didn't graduate from high school, I told them. I said, do I look like I'm doing pretty good, you know, in my life? And I said, I'm following my joy. And that's what I want to teach my family to do, too. Follow your joy. Don't do something that you don't want to do. And um, I tried to, I went back and I tried to do it. And they, my daughter, this last time, and she's 17, she said, you must go. You must go. And the other trip, they were all saying, Go and it seems like everything seems to be provided for. At first, it's very, very. It's shaken the whole picture, and it's fear, changed. Fear. Yeah, it's changed. It's shaken the whole boat, and it's given up our concepts of, like that's what I learned from those days. Our concepts of what a mother's supposed to be, our concepts of what a daughter and a son, and the relationship is supposed to be, and what is really important. 
is being in joy and by it's sharing joy too. As I started to travel the country, the parables would come out and it would be like I was listening to the parables, but it was a feeling like it really wasn't about me. They were just used in a, in a helpful way as it's just like Jesus, you know, there was a man who had two sons and the prodigal son and all the different parables. Those are like little little stories illustrations. and illustrations that, that yeah, that point. But really when it's like part of the joy of the moment is you really start to realize that you're not the story. You're that's the real freeing joy. No matter what the story seem to be, who you are right now is is not the story. And that's where you lose the guilt. Because the guilt was taking things personally. You know, that's, that perspective is where the, the guilt came in. Could, could you talk about an issue that um, I'm facing with a friend? Would you talk about suicide? Yeah. Suicide, you know, is described as a decision to kill oneself. And, and yet, um, all life and death is defined in terms of form. So. Life, in terms of form definitions, begins at birth, and or however it's defined in, in those kind of con terms. <laughs> Either <laughs> fetal or not. Right, right. <laughs> whatever. Oh, whatever. The, somewhere around birth, <laughs> whatever that's described as, and ends around death. And suicide it seems to be like the taking of a life. Um, mm -hmm. So, so suicide in those terms would seem different than. Um, you know, being hit by a truck, uh, or what the world would call accidents, where, you know, that something happens to you apart from your choice. You just happen to, happens to be, your, your day is up, you know, your, your life is up. But actually, everything is a decision by the mind. So, what I like to do is take it deeper and deeper to the point that your state of mind is either a reflection of life or death, in the sense that you're either joyful and peaceful and free and happy, which is your choice. That's that, state of mind. Or, you choose hell. You choose, it doesn't matter whether you're irritated or annoyed or tired or fearful, fearful angry. angry, guilty, you know, jealous, all those emotions. <coughs> so really, every moment is like a life or death situation or a life or death opportunity. To choose life, to choose the joy of being in the moment. Or to try to live in the past, which is where all those emotions come up, still trying to hang on to the linear thing. So you see how it lifts the whole definition out, out of a form sense of suicide to, you know, there's a part in the Course where he says, swear not to die, you holy son of God. <laughs> He's just saying, choose life, you know, like the billboards say, choose life, except this is, is not talking <laughs> about a, a fetus. This is talking about your state of mind. That you have the power to choose life at any any moment. So it takes this, the whole thing about suicide out as if, uh, you know, uh, life and death then are not seen in terms of form. Like I worked for hospice and they, were, they would call me into the rooms when I would walk along there and whatever they were incoherent or whatever, they would get very coherent when I would walk in the room and they asked me all these meaning of life questions and I would say, it's okay, you don't have to worry about um, your parents or your children or whatever, and it's okay to go to the light, and I was just, it was like a reflection of giving them permission to go back to the present moment, to the eternal moment. And then the next day I'd come in, and oh, so-and-so checked out, so-and-so, I had a high checkout rate. <laughs> uh, which, you know, from the worldly terms, you know, death is, is not good. You want to save lives and prolong lives mm -hmm. if you see it in terms of form, but when you get into content or mind, it's all just choose the present moment, choose Forgiveness, choose freedom. Don't choose, you know, grievances and hanging on to the past and people pleasing and all that. 